Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video I'm gonna show you how to fully disassemble and reassemble your Xbox Series X. Additionally, I'll explain how to troubleshoot its various hardware components. For this project you'll need a T8 Torque screwdriver, tweezers and some prying tools. I'll put links to all the stuff in the description below. So first you need to disassemble your device. Let's start by removing these two stickers that cover the screws. And then remove the screws themselves. Then using a prying tool or a flathead screwdriver, carefully pry the back cover at the bottom of the console. And pull it out. Next remove the stand by pushing the latch upward with the flathead screwdriver and rotating the stand counterclockwise. Now we can remove these four screws. Next we need to disconnect the fan connector from the motherboard and remove these screws that secure the fan. Then remove the fan by lifting it up and out of the case. Make sure that the fan spins easily and freely, and there is no resistance or grinding, otherwise it may be faulty and need to be replaced. Now we need to remove this plate that holds the disk drive in place. Once the plate is removed, disconnect the power and SATA cables from the drive, and then remove the drive itself. If your drive is unable to read any disks, then simply replace it with a new one. If the drive only works sometimes, then try to disassemble it and very gently clean the lens. If your disk drive is experiencing problems when injecting or pulling in disks, then you need to clean this rubber roller using rubbing alcohol. Next, disconnect these ribbon cables from the motherboard. To do this, gently open the metal latch with the prying tool and pull out the cable. For the other cable, simply push the latch and pull up the cable. With the cables disconnected, slide the chassis forward and pull the whole thing out of the case. Now let's take off this rubber strap, like so. Then remove the wireless board. If you're having trouble connecting any controllers to your console, the problem may be in this board. And now it's time to remove all the screws. Remove this bracket and the remaining screw. Once the screws are removed, detach the power cable from this plastic holder and lift the metal cover off the board. Next disconnect these power connectors by pressing on their latches. Once disconnected, remove the power supply. If your console doesn't show any signs of life, the issue might be with the power supply. You can test it by using a multimeter to measure the voltage on the 2-pin connector and between any gray and black wires on the 10-pin connector. Ideally, you should get a reading of around 12 volts. Then disconnect the interconnection ribbon cable. This connector may have two locking tabs on the sides or one in the middle. To disconnect, push on the tab and pull out the cable. With the cable disconnected, you can remove the system board. Next, take off this metal shielding that covers the SSD. Remove the screw and pull out the drive. And yeah, you can replace the original drive with any 500GB, 1 or 2TB SSD of the same form factor. If the SSD in your console is completely fried, you'll still be able to turn on your console, but the screen will stay blank. If the SSD has corrupted system files or partitions, then your console will turn on for a brief moment and then shut off. 
To diagnose the first case, simply replace the drive with a new one, and your console will start to turn on and then off. For the second case, simply remove the SSD and turn on the console. It should stop turning off. This will help you to determine whether the issue is with the SSD or something else. Next, we need to carefully unscrew the X clamp in a diagonal pattern. Now, gently separate the motherboard from the heatsink by pulling them apart slowly and carefully. Use a prying tool or your fingers to ease them apart if necessary. If your console is shutting off unexpectedly during gameplay, the issue may be due to overheating. You can try to resolve it by cleaning the cooling system and replacing the thermal interface. I have a video on that too, the link will be at the end of this video. Let's move on to the other part of the motherboard. Remove the screws that secure the wireless board. And then gently pull out the board. If your console can't find any Wi-Fi networks, that's the module you need to replace. Next, we need to remove this metal shielding. Then remove this cable holder. And finally, we can remove the board. So, since you separated the heatsink from the system board, you have to replace the thermal paste. And I highly recommend replacing all thermal pads as well. You can watch my video on how to do that. Finally, reassemble your console in the reverse order of its disassembly. Put the cable holder back into place, then the metal shielding, and secure it with the screws. Install the wireless card and replace the screws. Now flip the board and carefully reattach it to the heatsink. Install the X clamp and secure it with the screws. Slide the drive into the slot at an angle, gently press it down and secure it with a screw. Put the metal shielding back on and gently press it down to secure it. Run the ribbon cable through the chassis and carefully reconnect it. Now we can reconnect these connectors. Then place the metal cover over the motherboard and secure everything with the screws. Install the wireless card and replace the screws. Then attach the rubber strap. Now let's put the whole thing into the case. Then install the optical drive and its cover. Install the fan and connect all the cables to the board.
Now we can secure all the parts with the screws. Attach the stand like so. This tiny hole on the stand should be close to the one on the drive. Then turn it clockwise until it clicks into place. Now these holes are aligned and you can use it for emergency manual disk eject. Finally put the back cover in place and secure it with the screws. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.